Hello Star Wars Galaxy of Hero Players, this is Andy Tesh Ordo, and today I'm going to be covering the road ahead as for 4.10.2019, as well as the content update of 4.11.2019, which isn't going to be much. So, I think one thing is, I'm going to get into it, and, it, and of course anything I say in this video is as of the recording of the video on 4.12. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So hot off the presses as we kick off our booth at Celebration. Star Wars Celebration is happening now. So try to get into it. I'm still trying to find the live stream that they tend to do at every celebration. So I don't know where I'm having problems with it unless it's on Twitch this year. I think it's supposed to be YouTube. I don't know. I'll just have to keep looking for it. But anyways, it's been a year since Carrie has done the Road of Head. And I wanted to talk about some of the topics off the block from the from that blog to reflect changes the past year additionally <clears throat> things that we're going to be doing and as always the exciting things are planned in the future so let's go ahead and do this <clears throat> excuse me one year ago we committed to format the road ahead that was based on a few different criteria including some requirements inside EA as of this month ha have been changed and we also or we have also received feedback from you as well, which has allowed us to reflect on the structure of its entirety. Um, I'm not going to go too much. She just talks about that, but um, just the the goals and, and stuff for the communication and updates. Uh, something in particular we've been exploring is showing you behind the development curtain, providing you insight of the how we operate. Um, and they kind of did this both with Revan and Darth Revan. So when I did their kits reveals, I, sh I know I put the um, developer insights with them. And if I didn't, then I'll definitely post them in the description below. So stay tuned for that. Um, char character cadence update. Another topic that we know that is near and dear to everyone is the character cadence, the character release. At its core, Galaxy Heroes is a game about collecting characters and how and when they are released is always the topic of much conversation. However, as the game evolves, so must the way we re in which we release characters. You've already seen a couple of Galactic Chase events, Ebon Hawk and Emperor's Shuttle, as well as the merchandising marquee with Droidica. I'm kind of meh on it. Um, I would have rather, you know, gone up five bucks and given us 15 dollars worth of credits as well as or crystals as well as that but eh. one anyways going on to though one of the core ways to release in which we release characters is marquee events and while we're still doing marquees there are going to be a lot fewer this first half of the year there there were in the same time last year so we got like tons like almost every month we got like four to six uh, marquee events and it was insane like the solo movie gave us like six marquees um, between May and, Ju and June we got a ton of KOTOR characters a ton of bounty hunters <clears throat> excuse me um, the the reason for this is, is pretty straightforward there are a number of characters that by nature of the deep and ever evolving game did not perform as well as they should oh wait what and instead, you're going to see... Oh, oh sorry, I, I missed this part. So you're going to be seeing a lot more reworks visiting the Hollow Table. So that's going to be huge. That's good. We've gotten some reworks last year. We got all the Bounty Hunters reworked. Uh, we got um, Yoda, General Kenobi, as well as Palpatine and Vader reworked. And that's all we really got. We didn't get much more reworks than that. So... So yeah, they're going to be tackling a lot more reworks, and with all the reworks, we're aimed to make all the other characters undoubtedly perform better. So we might see some of the favorite uh, characters that Urzatron likes, you know, the Tuskens, Lobot. I don't know if they'll focus on them at all. I think they're going to be more Clone Wars-centric, so we're going to probably see a lot of clone troopers, which I'm excited for. Um, I kind of worked on them for like two weeks got him up to like gear 9 gear 10 uh, Rex was already gear 12 so I didn't have to work on him <laughs> so anyways however in some cases like the case of the recently reworked HK47 we 
We changed his core identity as a droid leader by giving him a new role in the Sith Empire team, which in giving him power and synergy with his master Darth Revan resulted in his, us nerfing his leader ability, which was really sad. I really hate that they took his leader away. They kind of ruined his They could have reworked his leader so he can kind of been a basic leader. But overall, we feel he ha is a more interesting and balanced character than before the rework. But he's he fit he's fit, but he's fits. I think it's supposed to be he fits. I don't. I'm not grammar, but he fits into a st substantially different team and role. For that reason, we've decided to refund investment of the leader. And every time we make a significant change, we will adapt to make that calculation. And they did that with Finn's leader. I took his Zeta, Finn's Zeta, because I don't care to use Finn much. I want to eventually work on him so that he can work under uh, JTR for Sith Raid Phase 1. Uh, I took his Zeta and gave it to Fulcrum Ahsoka. And it, it helps. I In Grand Arena, I won barely just because someone could not beat a Wiggs chase team with Fulcrum Ahsoka in it <laughs> so it was it was awesome it was awesome um, so however the time the time that the design balance QA and other teams on the reworks is sometimes more significant than it would <clears throat> would be to make a new character from scratch since many people already own these characters and have invested in teams to use them it is critical that we balance right and do our best to respect players previous investments in any characters we re-change, that we change. I say this to highlight that we try to think about all these things in a balance, marquee and reworks, with our eye towards different goals for the player base. For example, we just revealed a new kind of release that is very, very significant, difficult, and quite challenging called Mythic Battles. I do not remember revealing that, but okay, well, there's Mythic Battles coming out. It's not like any other type of release we've had until this point, unless they're talking about the uh, mythic battle of the Star Forge for Darth Malak. Um, but yeah, but we think that the theory crafting and sharing the strategy is going to be at another level. You've been warned, okay. And a quick note on character power. We are aware that it is an age-old quandary in games like this of the issues of dominance for certain characters in the meta. There will always be some dip pretty dominant characters, but our hope is that a variety of competitive teams filter into the community over time, and that primary meta of the game becomes a little more balanced in the future. While it may not be true, rock, paper, scissors meta, and while it may take some time to execute, this is a targeted end state. This end state is a reflection of on some of the competitive gameplay changes we're we've slowly been making as well <laughs> so that's that's good so they are still kind of wanting to get there but they're not there yet so rock paper scissors i still say the rock paper scissors lizard spock option is a little better get 10 20 teams that can be at the top instead of one two one <laughs> like for a while there jedi revenue was like just so dominant so now to the road ahead hello there <clears throat> yes um <clears throat> excuse me when we originally planned the last year of content, we found a chunk of time uh, for us to explore content the studio is very passionate about, being KOTOR. Between the important moments in the franchise, Solo and Episode 9, and while there are many more characters we want to bring to Old Republic era, I'm the reason you've seen Kem Vol in every con consumer survey, we are starting to shift our focus to a different era that we are going to spend some time on. <clears throat> this doesn't mean every release from now until episode 9 will be from this era. It's just it means that it provides a structure for the content and some of the features that we're doing. And that era, whether the inspiration comes from the prequels or animated series, is the Clone Wars. Yeah. So, starting off with reworks, <clears throat> they're going to be reworking the Jedi, uh, the trio of Master Duelists from the Jedi Order. Anakin Skywalker, General Kenobi, and Ahso Ahsoka Tano. General Kenobi, for example, is already one of the most used characters in our game. And so we will most likely focus our changes related to synergies with the other two rather than pure power. As we did with recent changes to Bastila Fallen, as well as, if you watch Darth Malak video I, I post as well, uh, re uh, the regular Bastila Sean. 
but the intent is for the three characters together to synergize, to evaluate the value of each other. We will have more to share with their kits in the upcoming weeks. So it sounds like this month we might actually be getting these three uh, reworked. That's good. Now, I do want to say one thing. I, I want to stress one thing on it, though. I feel like they could be, um, they could actually, I know it's as a marquee or something, but adding General Skywalker to the mix or a Mythic, uh, mythic Grade. Because Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker currently should be synergizing with a Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi in um because those are the that's the episode three anakin skywalker whereas they could still make a jedi or a general skywalker which kind of does have some clone armor on him but not as much as like obi-wan kenobi does i think obi-wan really wore the armor more than anakin did but anakin wore some armor and so they could technically make jedi Knight anakin or a general skywalker to synergize with general kenobi and ahsoka tano I will be having a video come out sometime next week covering and talking about those three specifically. So I thought it was kind of cool that I was recording it and then I'm going to re-record it because we got some new news on <clears throat> those three characters. So I thought it was interesting. Now going on though, look at this, look at this. We're finally going to get a new territory battles and it's going to be on Geonosis. I kind of always predicted that it's the, it's the middle movie of the trilogy that we're going to probably get. So I assume sometime next year we might get a territory battles of a battle of crate. Yeah, maybe maybe minute maybe maybe not. I don't know unless they have a bigger battle in episode 9 ground battle wise, but all the ground big ground battles I felt like were always in the middle movies. So that being Attack of the Clones had battle of Geonosis. Uh, Empire Strikes Back had Battle of Hoth, so and then of course yes, Episode Eight did have the Battle of uh, Crate. <clears throat> Even though I still don't like Episode Eight as much, but that's another video. But no, this is exciting though. So we're you know thrilled to announce around the time of the next big feature update, TU sixteen. I don't know what that means. Uh, which will land inside the next three months. We will be launching the first map of a brand new territory battle located on Geonosis and. and in anticipation of the launch of the brand new map, we've recently streamlined the Hoth map platoon so players can more effectively clear Hoth. The new Geonosis map will have new characters along with special events, and we are eager to share more details as we get closer to the release. Now, I will do a video covering this, or covering uh, some predicted characters that will be in, kind of like uh, we had... Um, uh, Imperial Probe, Droid, uh, Stark, uh, Rolo, and I'm going to a lot of these. Rolo and Hermit, Hermit Yoda and Wampa. You know, we had all those different characters, so we're probably going to get some new ones. So I will do some predictions and or possible predictions for this concept, and we'll see what happens from there. Because I have some ideas. Um, Oh, and uh, I forgot the other one was uh, Captain Han Solo. That was the other one. So there was six characters that we got for the Battle of Hoth for the Empire Strikes Back era. Of course, two of them were unlocked through the the events of or the um, Guild Event Store. So that's that's cool. So <clears throat> going on though, Grand Arena Championships. The last thing on the list is. In the update, we we are also going to be releasing an extension to Grand Arena. It's called Grand Arena Championships. Championship is a multi-week series of Grand Arena events and competitive challenges where players can fight their way into more and more exclusive leagues for higher rewards and ultimate bragging rights. The next update is to intend to be a start of the new era and competitive play in Galaxy of Heroes. And over time, we will be more... <coughs> There will be more, more and more ways to demonstrate that you are among the very best of the excuse me, Swolga players in the world. We have solicited some players for feedback, so that's good. And then finally, yes, Star Wars Celebration, like I said, is happening now. It's thought by our booth to talk about any of our team members in attendance about the upcoming Clone Wars content and watch Star Wars shows coverage of the event on April 11th. If you are going, if you are attending, swing by early and drop off your ally code for some swag. I wish I was there to get some swag. I don't know if it's like any like <clears throat> in-game currency or it's just you know like shirts and stuff you can wear. So 
you know, you have to let, if anyone gets any of that info, just let me know in the comments below. That'd be great. I assume that's probably what it is, is more shirts than, you know, unless they actually give the ally code, you know, you know, you get like a thousand crystals and five million uh, credits and five million ship currency, something like that. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> It'd be cool for those that actually get it, though. <laughs> um, there'd be a lot of excitement, passion, or excitement and passion for the players throughout the entire development cycle. And we are always endeavor to be worthy of your time and attention. So we, so are, are we happy? <clears throat> we are so happy to continue to play in this sandbox and provide new challenges. And as always, we'll see you at the hollow tables and a celebration. And then that's from Carrie, CG Carrie. Thank you. So this, like I said, is exciting news. I can't wait to see you know a lot of characters reworked. Also, when they brought out. Um, the Battle of Hoth, you know, and some of it extended into uh, last year. They reworked um, a good chunk of the Rebels. Some of the Rebels were already reworked, but some of them were added. You know, we got CLS, you know, helping really that. Um, we eventually, yes, last year we also got Chewbacca, which also helps in that area, era, uh, in that um, in that territory battles of Hoth. So we got some good Imperial teams, good rebel teams etc etc so yeah it's it's exciting to see this all unfold we're finally getting a new map and so we're going to probably get see a ton of reworks um we already got the reworks of general grievous ig 100 magna guard uh b2 as well as b1 added in droidica so we're going to see where we're going to probably need all five of those so definitely you know if you're not working on the revan stuff you could also start working on that to help your guild out that's another option. Also, I do like how the map looks. It looks phenomenal. Like you have this here, then you have the big battle here, and then you got some of these other battles here. Um, and this is where Dooku lands, and this is just where everything else is. There's also a factory too, which also kind of, if you look, kind of has some similar shape, some similar shape. Of course, it could have had some more of these uh, towers to the battlefront map because there's kind of like a factory hangar here and then the clones started there and worked their way down to destroy these on this side whereas everyone else was attacking this way it's kind of interesting it is kind of interesting i will say so but this is a cool looking map i like it and, I, and like i said it has some f features of battlefront 2 in some ways not exactly but hey it's kind of cool so other than that thanks for watching i really appreciate all those that watch the videos i make and you guys have a phenomenal weekend Thank <laughs> you.